guys, just back from a trip abroad, Germany and France. Did you have a good time out there? Good meeting? Yeah, hey, you it? Yeah, it was Did pretty we? good. Yeah, we, we wrote uh, three meetings, you know, and like, uh, every track was different, which, um, yeah, which was good, really. Yeah. And also, you had a disappointing ride at College Street, lots of mechanical problems. Do you find uh, looking forward to today? Yeah, we seem to have always seem to have problems at College Street. We go to College Street, believing we can win at College Street. Uh, probably like about four or five other riders, and yeah, and we're the ones that don't win, unfortunately. Yeah. So, any changes or plans for the rest of the season now? Nah, not too much really. There, like, well, the boat is all together and all that. Everything else is going pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. Yeah, we just got hope for reliability you now. Like, you know, we know. Um, there's probably four or five blokes, any one of us can win races, we keep saying that, all five of us respect each other and we all know that, so like, yeah, it's, at the end of the day, it's, yeah, it's down to luck really. Yeah, and have you had a look at the track today, what do we reckon? Yeah, a bit bigger than last year. Yeah, it looks like they've pulled the track around the outside compared to last year, and, yeah, the track's going to run very slick and I think the biggest problem here today will be dust, you know, we just yeah. got over it like, yeah. And it's going to be very difficult out of starts today because there's a little bit restricted out of the later track out here. So um, one and two is going to be very straight to the first corner. So I haven't looked at our starting positions here, but just hope we haven't got to him. So the one and two are planning on taking their speedway bikes down today. Do you reckon that's going to be an advantage to them? I don't know, really. Like, it's a pretty smooth track, recently, and it looks like it's going to rough up too much. So it'll be interesting to see, I suppose. Yeah. So a podium position would be good then? Oh, we won it last year, so we'll okay. do it again. We'll try and repeat that. Well, good yeah. luck, guys, and have a great day. Thank you. So, Rob Wilson, back from a trip abroad, Germany and France. So you had a cracking race in Germany. Flying, uncatchable, from what I could see. How do we uh, hope to do today? Yeah, I mean, today's different again. I mean, track conditions are, are always going to be a must wherever we go. So, yeah, obviously we had the right set up there and everything went in, went in our favour, you know. But really and truly, today will be a different thing altogether, I think. So, are the uh, team still on a big high from your uh, big win at the Floodlit recently? Um, yeah, I suppose, yeah. We, we've had a good year, to be fair, so we've just got to keep plugging away, you know. Yeah, so everything seems to be coming together at the right time now. And yet we hear you retiring at the end of the year. Do you think it might be a, a bit of an early retirement if things are going good? Well, no, not really. I mean, I've had, yeah, I've had 28 years of it, and I suppose for the last probably nine or ten years we've been there and thereabouts. So it'd just be nice to go out and sort of be, you know, up with the, with the top lads, really. So could we be aiming for a Masters uh, win on your last year here? Uh, It'd be great to do that, but it's a tall order, you know, there's a lot, a lot of other good guys out there, so not all... too worried. Just just want to really have a, you know, finish off the year being amongst the lads, and that's it, really. There always seems to be every week, there's always uh, three or four of you, for Whiteland, Duncan Tollers, Miles, you're always there about, John Halsey, and do you find that you, you know when you're out there you can trust every single one of them teams? Oh, yeah, for sure, you know, they're the boys that you, you will race against each week, and yeah, that, that's what it's all about, really. Yeah, and a lot of respect, having been a with you guys you really do support each other well yeah i mean grass tracks always been a like that I'm, I'm sure like when we go to the line there's not too many favors done but certainly the social side of things we try and keep it stick together and help each other out really yeah so uh, any plans for your retirement then next year no not really obviously yeah probably yeah i'd like to go and watch some grand prix speedway grand prix perhaps and uh, obviously still come and watch some of the grass tracks and uh, just chill out really yeah so uh, podium position today be nice, but uh, like you say, you're only as good as your last ride, so we'll see. Well, that was a cracking one then, Rob. I was there and you were flying, so yeah. good luck right. with today. Yeah. Have a great day. No worries. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Glenn, so nice to see you here today. Um, what you, plans for today? Any changes to your bike? You had a few problems last night out here? Yep. Um, blew an engine up last night, and um, second one this week. Um, so all I've got left is my long track engine now, and as you can see, the track's only small, so could be exciting. Right, so you've just had uh, quite a few trips abroad. How do you manage your busy schedule? Dad drives, I sleep. Oh, well that's easy then. <laughs> you say <laughs> you're only it. left with one engine. Does that mean we have a stack of them in the garage? No, they're all here. One's in bits, one's in that bike, dead, and that's the only one going. So, just fingers crossed it might work right. To so get them going. Yeah. So, any other changes for the rest of the season? Um, engine tuners, I suppose. That's right. Might it. be a good bet if you're <laughs> pulling them up. So, uh, 
Did I write, what, you qualified for something you were there in France and did you qualify or Germany? No, it was um, in Holland at the start of the year and um, qualified for the European final. So right, and what that's is that? That's in two weeks time. Excellent. So are you yeah. looking forward to that? Yeah, we've just got to get the engine sorted and then hopefully we'll have a good day. And, and then an aim for the Masters, I suppose. Yeah, wild yeah. card, so. Yeah, you got a wild yeah. card. Excellent. So, no. so yeah. have you ridden down at Maidstone before? No, never. No. So it could be a shock. So that's going to be an interesting track for you then. Yeah. So looking forward to it. Well, yeah. have a good day today. All right, thank you. Hope the engine holds out for yeah, you. Yeah, thanks. Lewis Denham, we've got to start this interview with a happy birthday. I believe you're 18 today. Yeah, yeah. so have you been another look at the track today? What do we think? Um, it looks the uh, same, as, same as last year. Um, it'll get hard and slick like it always does. But, yeah. And was you riding yesterday or just um, today? No, just today. I, I rode in France in a week. It's a bit too much to ride both days. So. And how did you get on in my mod? Um, I was uh, ninth overall. Um, I won my first race, uh, third and second, and I uh, DNF in the last one. So. Yeah, not too bad then. Yeah, all right. So your last big grass track here was obviously the British Championships. Yep. So the 350 final was a bit of a wobbler, I hear. Yeah, um, it, well, so I went, went into the bend first and just hit a bad rub and the train fell off, so you know, it happens. These things happen. Yeah. And how did you find riding at Collier Street? Lovely. Um, oh, it was an experience, it really yeah. was. I mean, there was a big crowd there as well, and um, I think everyone enjoyed it. It was something different. I think it gave uh, the sport an incredible boost That's to see definitely. so many people there. Yeah, they, they need more meetings like that. Yeah, and the clubs like the Fire and Cycle Association are here today, and Tumbridge and Morland should be commended on being yeah. here. You hopefully, I suppose, next day you miss the Masters. Am I yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Look, I'll do the qualifier, then I'll be into the. Uh, well, hopefully, I'll be into the Masters. So. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, an aim for the burn up as well, then. But yeah, yeah, definitely. So we have some big meetings coming up. Yeah. Anything you, any other changes you plan to make? Any engine changes or anything? That um, do? nothing really. I'll, I'll wait until the new season next year and so go from there. So yeah. just stay on the old stuff as well. Stay on the old stuff to the end of the year. Have you been uh, quite helped this year? Many sponsors. Um, yeah, we've got John Meredith, um, Sussex Quads, DNR, obviously, Run and Dunk. So you're so quite helping. Right. They're quite yeah. helping you out then. Good. Sure. Well, good luck for today and Thanks enjoy the rest much. of your birthday and uh, we'll hope for a win for your 18th. See ya. Well, yeah, Link, welcome back to uh, the UK. Uh, after a recent amazing second, was it at uh, the Floodlit, I think? Yeah, it was. yeah, How did you find that? Well, it was a very good meeting for me. Yeah. And uh, well, hopefully I'll do the same here today, but uh, just see how the practice goes. And see if I can fix the bikes up all right. Obviously I've been abroad myself and seen some of these tracks and they're pretty much on a par with uh, Collier Street. So it was yeah. like riding at home really for you Yeah, though. it was like a bit like Ainram. Yeah. In Holland we have a track in Ainram and it's about the same as in Collier Street but this is quite different than in Holland. Yeah, it was nice to go there and see the crowd at Collier Street because obviously abroad, I haven't seen it, yeah. the crowds are always huge there. So, And that was the well, biggest meeting here for us. In, in Holland, we're lucky to have 2,000 people on the track, but when you go to Marmanda or something yeah. like that, you have... I was there Wednesday and it was 12,000 people around the track. And that's Excellent. Well, you've just been out for practice. How did we find it? Well, it's still a bit slick and... Uh, well, I don't know. The track obviously will change, I think. Yeah, and so then... Uh, Planning go another for a, practice? A yeah, go for a second run, change a few things and so then see a, how it goes. So a win or a second or a third would be great to go home with today then? I'll just do my best and I'll see how I end up. Have you got any more uh, big European meetings come up? I've got uh, next week, I've got a, a Dutch uh, Speedway meeting and then the week afterwards I've got the European Championship final in Schwama. And then the week after that, I can't remember, Welte, yeah Welte. Busy schedule. So do you plan yeah. on doing more meetings over here if you can get in them? If I can get in and if I've got the time for it, yeah. Yeah, because obviously it's a big difference coming all this way for you. And yeah, and it's a lot of money. Yeah, and there's unfortunately the clubs here don't tend to be able to fork out for that sort yeah. of thing. But it's great to see you here today. We yeah, hope to see much. a cracking ride like that. Uh, I hope so too. Yeah, good luck. Well, thank you very much. Have a much. safe day and we'll see you soon. Yeah. So William and Tyson, you're here over uh, from Germany. Holland. Uh, looking forward to today? Yeah, it's uh, nice weather, the track is good, and the uh, last time I was here with the European, and the uh, track was very hard, very slippery, and I was not so good on it, but now I've come back and I try it again. So, um, have you already done your European semi? Have you done your one? 
Yeah. So yeah. Like, if you haven't, how did you do that? Yeah, I won the semi. You won it? Excellent. Yeah. So we're just aiming for the final now. Yeah. And where's the final? Uh, the final is in uh, Sidibur in Holland. Right, and you're looking forward to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you do last year in the final? Last year I was here, was uh, third. Third, excellent. Yeah. So uh, we're hoping to improve on that this year then? Yeah, yeah. I hope uh, this year we can go going forward and we try to get a, uh, the title this year. So do you have a busy schedule back home? Because I know you guys ride abroad a lot more than we do here. Yeah. So uh, do you find yourself like racing every week? Or? Yeah. Um, Every week, uh, sometimes the, yesterday I have won a meeting in Holland and now here and most of the time two meetings in one weekend. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. So looking forward to today. So have you haven't practiced yet? No. No, because you're about to go out. Yeah. Fingers crossed for a good meeting okay. and we hope to you have a good day. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, if you turn it down a little bit, it would be nice. Thank you very much. Liz, I like the hat. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank oh, you. Well. <laughs> he needs something to make him taller, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. What, twat? Yeah. <laughs> make him look taller. Have a good day. Come off yours. That's all right. Yeah. I don't know. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Lovely. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Ride right round if you want. Ride round. Ride round. Push way and tighten one another then. Ladies and gentlemen, with Kyle and Mr. Devine on the CC side of our number, the next is being made this weekend. Devine and Mr. Devine are here. The fifth and winner here at that time is on the line. John was with the ground up in 1970. Led by the British champions, Sean Harvey and Danny Hogg. 
Their machines. We're not hold, asked, asked, been asked to hold the red flag for a moment while they get those machines going. Three, six, eight, obviously seven. Okay, all eight coming into the line. The green flag shows, and we're going to be underway with race one. Place your bets. 
We have a right continental flavour here with Boreas Rockerberger, Stephen van der Hel going in this one. The rest are flying the flag for England. Steve Brayford settles in. The revs rise and there they go down the first turn and Lewis Tennant makes the start. Lewis Denham lifts a little bit going wide into that turn and Glenn Phillips sneaks through on the inside. Glenn Phillips lines it up there the back straight. It is Glenn Phillips the lead from Lewis Denham and Steve Brayford. Steve Brayford making a move around the outside of Lewis Denham. Lewis Denham screws the throttle on even harder and chases up there on the inside line with Steve Brayford. But it's Glenn Phillips all the way on the front line. Gareth Hickmott down there in fourth. Then it's number 10, Stephen Van der Hel. And High Easter. Back out around the turn, not a bit of dust inside. Here they come, it's 42. Glenn Phillips from Steve Brayford, from Lewis Denham. Reese Wilding now up into fourth place. Gareth Hickmott, Stephen Van der Hel, and Marius Rockerberg. Harry Masson bringing up the rear. We arrived for Jerry this afternoon on our 500 CC machine. And the 350 and does so very well. It's 42, Glenn Phillips then, with just one lap left to go. He's well clear of second place. Steve Brayford, but look at that man in third, Lewis Denham comes to age, he's going to really try on this last turn, around they come then, Ben Phillips on the high wide and handsome line, and Steve Brayford's bike goes in trouble, he's let uh, Lewis through on the inside, Lewis Denham takes the second, Steve Brayford with trouble there in third, then Rhys Wilding, Gareth Hickmott, Marius Rockerberg, Stephen van der Helm, and Terry Massingham. A win there for number 42, Glenn Phillips. Second place, number 81, Lewis Denham. Third place, number 215, Steve Braidford. Fourth place, number 18, Reese Wilding. Fifth place, number 7, Gareth Hickmott. Sixth place, number 1, Marius Rockerberg. Seventh place, number 10, Stephen van der Helm. Eighth place, number 213, Terry Massingham. The winner's time was 1 minute 15.68 seconds. Haven't got a speed yet, we'll try and get one worked out for you. That result going quickly, 42, 81, 215, 18, 7, 1, 10 and 213. 1 minute 15.68 seconds. Rolling up to the line then for race two, look for number two, Tim Nobes. Eight, Rennie Van Veel. Eleven, our own Paul Cooper. 25, Martin Williams, 47, David Durham, 72, Richard Knight, 170, Mark Taylor, and 461, Jack Meredith. Riders coming into line then. Nobody keeps touching that tape on the other side, he's a nuisance. The rest rise and they fly, and away they go, and down the first straight. Powering out of the turn, Paul Cooper makes the most of it. Paul Cooper gets away on the top car. Well ahead of the rest of the field here at the moment. Powering on out of that turn, looking very, very fast indeed. Paul Cooper from Mark Taylor. There's somebody down on the uh, paddock turn there. The yellow flags are out. The race has been stopped. Red flags are out. No doubt the uh, rider there to cause the race to be stopped will not be allowed in the rerun. I wonder if we're going on the park firm A for refuelling or whether we're going to continue. And uh, Wolf Sport Clothing. More about those later as the riders come to the line for race three. Ladies and gentlemen, this is race three. I can see Bradley Kite on this side of the start line. Mark Ferry's next to him, Strider Horton over on the other side there, Richard Smith coming into line, Martin Sturgeon, Tim Mount and Danny Stanton. This is race three, here at High Easter. Number nine there, Yannick Dion, that'll be the man to watch in this one. They head down into the first turn. Yannick de Jong takes a very, very tight line, moves himself up into third place, dropping down to fourth. De Jong overlocks, coming out of that corner. And he's uh, getting himself all in line. We seem to have a fallen rider. He's up and OK on the far side there. Looks like Bradley Kite, but I'm not sure. 33, Richard Smith leads from Danny Stanton. From 15, Martin Sturgeon. Then number nine, Yannick de Jong, Strider Horton and Tim Mount. Ferry also 
dealt with problems over there on the far side. Quite see what happened with those, but uh, Richard Smith leads it. After his big continental experience a couple of weeks ago. Powering on well at this one. Richard Smith down the back straight then. Leading from Martin Sturgeon, not Yannick Dion. Who came second in the Tunbridge Bloodlet meeting a couple of weeks ago. Wasn't he flying there? So as soon as he gets uh, used to this smaller circuit, I'm well, sure he'll fly around this one as well. Give him Martin Sturgeon a bit of a headache at the moment in the third place. But it's Richard Smith down the back straight. Around that last turn, the chequered flag is being made ready. 33, Richard Smith takes the win. From 9, Yannick de Jong. From 15, Martin Sturgeon. 56, the Australian Strider Horton. Number 17, Tim Mount. Race 3, a win for 33, Richard Smith. Second place, number 9, Yannick de Jong. From Holland. In third place, number 15, Martin Sturgeon. In fourth place, from Australia, number 56, Strider Horton. And in fifth place, from Ashford in Kent, number 17, Tim Mount. No other finishers. The winner's time was 1 minute 18.80 seconds. 1 minute 18.80 seconds. We should now go back to race two. Indeed, it is the solos that are coming to line. Number eight, Rennie Van Veel. Heading towards the inside. Number 11, Paul Cooper, who led the, uh, this race at the first time of asking after a brilliant start, trying to repeat that fate. 47, Dave Durham. 25, Martin Williams. 170, Mark Taylor. 72, Richard Knight. Just back from a nasty tumble a couple of weeks ago. 461, Mr. Meredith. Jack Meredith on the outside here. Starter's not happy yet. They're all in. They're under starter's orders. And off they go. A cracking start from Rennie Van Veel on the inside, but it's a tight, tight turn around that inside. Paul Cooper gets the best of it again out of that corner. One or two elbows, I think, touching, and somebody goes down on the far side. He's up and OK. Round the track come the rest of them. Paul Cooper leading for Britain. Rennie Van Veel in second place. Then Richard Knight, Martin Williams, Dave Durham, and Jack Meredith bringing up the rear. Lovely little track here at High Easter. And Paul Cooper is loving every minute of it. Paul Cooper leads then. Rennie Van Veel in second. Richard Knight and Martin Williams having a right ding-dong battle between them, followed by Dave Durham. Martin Williams holding on to that inside line. Richard Knight taking the outside wide, he's slowed up, a big gap has come between the third and fourth places. On the last lap flag, it's Paul Cooper that leads on the Woodcock Jawa from Rennie Van Veel. Martin Williams, Richard Knight, Dave Durham. The chequered flag is made ready and Paul Cooper's going to take it by storm. Paul Cooper wins. The rerun of heat two. From number eight, Rennie Van Veel. From 25, Martin Williams. From 72, Richard Knight. 47, Dave Durham. 461, Jack Meredith. Race two, the rerun of race two. Put the result in the right place. A win, a cracking win, for number 11, Paul Cooper. Second place went to number eight, Rennie Van Veel. In third place, number 25, Martin Williams. In fourth place, number 72, Richard Knight. In fifth place, number 47, Dave Durham. And in sixth place, 461, Jack Meredith. No other finishers. The winner's time was 1 minute 16.74 seconds. 1 minute 16.74 seconds. The Continental 1000cc right-hand sidecars. A man to watch for in this one is number 52, Roel Limburg and Eric Van Dyke. There they are, the big red outfit, the yellow frame, driving onto the start line. That's Roel Lindbergh and Eric Van Dyke. We have number 99 here, Trevor Colvin and Terry Saunters. We have 87, Rob Bradley, and uh, now I've forgotten who's with him. Roel Lindbergh then. Uh, 
installed the machine, it's coming back into line with that one. Peter Lloyd and Terry Madley on the inside. I think there's one more inside them actually. Revs rise, there they go. A big blast to the first turn. Down the straight they go. All bunching and all over the place on that first turn. Out of the turn they go and down the straight and absolutely flat out and going for it into that turn. Look at those three outfits all close together. Gary Jackson there in second place. Rob Bradley in third, but it's number one, James Rogers that leads. James Rogers and Kevin Colborn. Working hard to stay in front of this lot. The local boys come good. And Rob Bradley sneaks through on the inside of Gary Jackson and uh, Rob Bradley sets his sight on the back wheel of uh, James Rogers. Round they come then. It's tight stuff here on the front line. It's number one, James Rogers and Kevin Colborn that lead from 87, Rob Bradley. Then Gary Jackson in third. Terry, uh, Trevor Colvin and Terry Saunders in fourth. Around they come then, the last lap flag, and uh, Rob Bradley starts to show a front wheel on the inside of James Rogers. It's going to be a titanic battle on this last lap. Can Rob Bradley get there? Rob Bradley, of course, is a previous Masters champion, a jack of all trades in this grass track with solos and sidecars. Titles under his belt. Round they come then. The checkered flag goes. It's number one, James Rogers that takes it from Rob Bradley in second, Gary Jackson in third, Trevor Colvin in fourth. Peter Lloyd in fifth and Rob Lindbergh in sixth. Race four and a win for number one, a good win, a, a well-deserved win for number one, James Rogers and Kevin Colborne. In second place was number 87, Rob Bradley and A another. In third place it was number 23, Gary Jackson and Carl Blythe. In fourth place was number 99, Trevor Colvin and Terry Saunters. In fifth place was number four, Peter Lloyd and Terry Madley. And in sixth place was number 52, Rob Lindbergh and Eric Van Dyke. The winner's time was 1 minute 22.50 seconds. 1 minute 22.50 seconds. Coming to the line now then, 184, John Hiscock. And Simon Wall. Number 90, Mike Day and Martin Smith. Number 2, Steve Smith and Carl Squirrel. Number 7, Paul Johnson and Mark Brewster. And number 24, Rob Wilson and Ian Weil. That's your lineup for race five. Right hand sidecars, 1,000 cc's, burning methanol. One brake on the handlebar. They choose which wheelie goes on. The rest rise. And off they go again, another cracking start. Down into the first turn they go. John Iscock takes the wide line right round the outside. Duncan Solis forces his way into front. John Iscock's on his outside there. A little bit of a do si on the inside from Mike Day, but everybody's safe and everybody's okay. Around the turn they come then. Duncan Tollers, Rob Patterson, known as Fruit Bat in Australia. A lead from Mike Day, from John Hiscock, from Rob Wilson. Who would have thought Rob Wilson would have been down in fourth place? Who would have thought Steve Smith would be last? He could pass on the big World Wide Web this week about him uh, not being invited into the qualifier. 74, Rob Wilson. Oh, Rob, Rob, 74. Duncan Solers. Did you see that wheelie and that big twist of that frame? And now Duncan put it back down and under control very quickly. On the front line then, Duncan Solers. Rob Patterson. Being pushed hard now by Mike Day. Mike Day goes a little wide, opens the gap. Rob Wilson sees the gap. Can he go through there? They're on the last lap now. Duncan Solers leads it. Mike Day in second, Rob Wilson in third, John Hiscock in fourth. Paul Johnson in fifth, there goes the chequered flag, Duncan Solos takes it, Mike Day gets second, Rob Wilson third, then John Hiscock, Paul Johnson, Steve Smith. Race five, a win for number 74, Duncan Tollers and Rob Patterson. Second place, number 90, Mike Day and Martin Smith. Third place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Ian Weil. Fourth place, number 184, John Hiscock and Simon Wall. Fifth place, number seven, Paul Johnson and Mark Brewster. And in sixth place, number two, Steve Smith and Carl Squirrel. The winner's time, 1 minute 22.09 seconds. Coming to the line, I can see uh, Paul Whitelam making his way to the... 
start line with Nicky Owen in the chair. Weidemann, Nicky Owen. 306, Mark Warren, Gary Lux. 18, Gary and Craig Parmenter. 3, Lee Jones. And Paddy Monk. Number 8, Paul Bickley and Paul Silvera. And 48, Rod and Tristan Winterburn. From the north west side of the country. Revs right, takes fly, there they go. All hammering down into the first turn. Paul Whiteland looks like he's got there first with Nicky Owen in the chair. Scorching out of that uh, turn, putting a few yards distance between themselves and Rod and Tristan Winterburn, who are there in second place and fighting for it at the moment. Paul Bickley is in third. Paul Whiteland, really going for it here this afternoon. Inching ahead as the uh, laps go by. A bike thing gained there on that map, I think. Rod and Tristan Winterburn happy with their second, I should think. It's the points that count, and the points make the places in the final. And here they come. It's 92, Paul Whiteland. And Nicky Owen. Oh, something going on. Who's that on the inside there just stopped? Quickly, a false error. Now to the running in this one. Front two now, well out on their own, and Paul Whiteland. Getting down to business. Paul Whiteland and Nicky Owen from Rod and Tristan Winterburn in second. Palmer to Boys in third. Lee Jones in fourth. Mark Warren in fifth. Checkered flag comes out now. So they go to the line. It's 92. Paul Whiteland. 48. Rod Winterburn. 18. Gary Parmenter. 3. Lee Jones. 3.06, Mark Warren. First place, number 92, Paul Whiteland and Nick Owen. Second place, number 48, Rod and Tristan Winterburn. Third place, number 18, Gary and Craig Parmenter. Fourth place, number 3, Lee Jones. And I've forgotten now, but I will remember later. And in fifth place, was number 3.06, Mark Warren and Gary Lux. Now, Paddy Monk, Lee Jones and Paddy Monk. The winner's time was 1 minute 22.03 seconds. 1 minute 22.03 seconds. Here come the international class of side cars, the 500cc side cars, the class that grows on me as the weeks go by. Well, race seven, we have number nine, William and Natalie Matthiasson, probably the uh, favourites for this one. Simon Beard and Rob Graves go as well. Wilfred and Denny Dents, Brian Canning, Stephen George, Nick Bradley, Craig Matheson, and Keith Richards, Tony Martin. That's the lineup for race seven. There they go. Down into the first turn, and it does look like it's William and Natalie Matthiasson that come out of the turn in first place. Simon Beard right on their back wheel as they come out of their corner, but the tires can get the wheels in line and drive down the straight very fast, very hard into that next turn. Winding up the throttle, William and Natalie Matthiasson absolutely flying here this afternoon. Nick Bradley coming on board now, he's trying to take that second place away from Simon Beard. Looks like he's done it. He chases after William Matthiasson. William and Natalie Matthiasson then, flat out, from Nick Radley and Craig Matheson, Simon Beard and Stuart Supple. Look at the style of that man as he gets right off the side of that outfit, 
On the last lap he goes. Screaming the brains out of the engine and absolutely flying here at High Easter. Nick Radley in second place, Simon Beard in third. The Matthiasons take the win. From Nick Radley in second, Simon Beard in third, Brian Canning in fourth. Oh, well, that was very close. Wouldn't like to try and sort those two out for that fifth place. We'll leave that to the lap scorers, that's their job. Race seven, a win for number naught, William and Natalie Matthiasen. In second place, number 21, Nick Radley and Craig Matheson. In third place, number four, Simon Beard and Rob Graves. Sorry, I said it was Stuart Summer earlier on, but it was Rob Graves. Fourth place, number 49, Brian Canning and Steve George. Fifth place, number 143, Keith Richards and Tony Martin. And sixth place, number 11, Wilfred and Denny Detz. The winner's time, 1 minute 22.63 seconds. Race 8 then, we look for Clive Willis and Boy Wonder Webb. Now they're over there on the inside, gate number 1. In gate number 2 is Barry Bennett and Knife on Hughes. In gate number 3, Yo-Yo Van Der Werf and Eric Van Dyke. In grid number 4, I'm not sure, we were, it was going to be Scott Francis and Paul Fisher. And in grid 5, Scott Dunn and Joanne Brian Bray on the big wheelie on the inside from Clive Willis. He looks around to make sure the passenger's still on. That was very decent of him as he pulls up in a third place on that first turn. Now he sets about making his tracks on those Three very fast outfits on the front line there. Doing the business this afternoon. Number 7, Barry Bennett leads it from uh, Scott Dunn in second place. Clive Willis in third, Clive Willis trying to make a move on the inside of Scott Dunn there, didn't quite get there that time, but Scott Dunn moved into the line, but uh, down into the turn they go, locking up sideways, those three outfits very close together, a little too close perhaps, number seven, Barry Bennett, from Scott Dunn, from Clive Willis, from Yo-Yo van der Werf, then hitting the power on the ground Barry Bennett knife on Hughes lead Scott Dunn and Joanne Brian Brown in second place Clive Willis holding on to that third in this yo-yo van der Werth and Eric van Dyke number seven Barry Bennett from Scott Dunn, from Clive Willis, Yo-Yo van der Werf. I think that was Alan Morgan and Anders van der Werf in fifth place. So the win for number seven, Barry Bennett, knife on Hughes. Second place, number one, one eight, Scott Dunn and Joanne Brian Brown. Third place, number one, Clive Willis and Richard Webb. Fourth place, number 12, Yo-Yo van der Werf and Eric van Dyke. Fifth place, number one, five, six, and I think that's Alan Morgan and Anders McFarlane. No finish. Oh, the finishes. The winner's time was 1 minute 25.84 seconds, 43.78 miles per hour. 43.78 miles per hour. Race 9 coming to the line then. Look out. I think the sparks will fly. On that inside grid, number 1, we have Lester Goodwin and Anthony Goodwin. In grid 2, we have Tony Cook and Debbie Bird. On grid three, we have Raymond de Roy and Sandra Malima. In grid four, number 72, Sean Harvey and Danny Hall. Where's the Uters then? In grid five, number one, two, three, Paul Moorcock and John Cook. Somebody's got the horn. And in grid six, number five, Pascal Bessonet and Jay Bertrand. Away they go then, into the turn, a little bit too busy and here, I didn't get that result out, did I? But I'll do it after this one, look at them flying out of that turn there, and they're very, very close together, and like, you know, the honeypot. Around they come then, 
the action is on and here they come down the straight it's number three Lester Goodwin and Anthony Goodwin that lead it is Sean Harvey and Danny Holt right there in second place pushing hard I knew we were going to have some sparks in this one just look at those two outfits as they go down that straight after his puncher in the Nationals, a heartbreaking puncher, I can tell you. He wants to prove he's still the UK's number one. It is three. Oh, Lester Goodwin from 72. Sean Harvey in that second place. And Sean Harvey is waiting to pounce. He's waiting for a mistake from Lester. And Lester's determined not to make one. But look, they get posted again as they go down that straight. Into the turn they come then. The last lap flag comes out this time. Sean takes the wide line. Lester's on the inside. Anthony looks across. They're tight together as they go round that turn there. On the last lap they are. And Lester overspins it. Danny goes down. Sean goes down the back straight. Lester pulls a few yards again. They're on the last turn. It's sure to happen now or never. Around the turn. Look at them. Just look at that spectacle of those two outfits coming around there. Locked in battle. The checkered flag is out. And whoa! I'm going to leave that to these boys in here because it's unfair of me to say anything. What a cracking finish. Race nine, the race you've just seen, and what a cracking finish. I think we're in for some really good hot stuff here this afternoon. That's just a taster. There's more to come. Race nine, a win for number three, Lester and Anthony Goodwin. In second place, number 72, Sean Harvey and Danny Hogg. Third place, I can't hear you, I'm a bit deaf this week, just shout a bit louder. Third place was number six, Raymond Arroyo and Sandra Malima. Fourth place went to number ten, Tony Cook and Debbie Bird. And fifth place to number one, two, three, Paul Moorcock and John Cook. No six finisher, the winner's time was 1 minute 24.47 seconds. 1 minute 24.47 from the top then, 3, 72, 6, 10, 1, 2, 3. 1 minute 24.47 seconds, a speed of 43.8 miles per hour. So, speeds do seem a bit slow to me this afternoon for the way they're rattling around here. Longer course than yesterday of course, don't forget that. Here we go then. Zez. Les, VLES, Veteran Long Track Expert Society, something like that. This is the Veteran Long Track Series, and uh, going here on grid one is number 16, Hartman Ernst. From grid two is number seven, Kenny Blaine. Taking the place of Walter Johansson is 47, Ian Guttridge. On grid four is number five, Brian Bassett. Grid five, number 11, John Wheatley. Grid six, Franz Greisel from Germany, riding number one. On grid 7 is number 9, Dennis Hall, and on grid 8, number 3, Dave Norris. There they go, down the straight. Cracking good start for everybody except number 5. He must have been asleep, Brian Brassett. Well, there they go then. Dave Norris, I think it is, has hit the front down that back straight. With the 375 British title the other week. I wasn't there, I was somewhere else. But look at him go as he comes down his street, looks over his shoulder. It's Dave Norris. From number seven, Kenny Blaine holding on to second place and getting Kenny Blaine giving a bit of a heartache there on the inside, but uh, Dave Norris is back up again. Give him the 18 over 25 to ride in it. Round they come. Number three, Dave Norris. From number seven. Kenny Blaine from number one, Frank Greisel. Commentary box here, but I don't like an easy time. Number three, Dave Norris on the last lap then. From Kenny Blaine, from Frank Greisel, from Ian Guttridge, the ex-British 375 champion. goes and a win for number three Dave Knocker Norris from number seven Kenny Blaine and then it was very tight between Frank Reisel and Ian Guttridge race 10 race 10 the veteran long track series 
A win for number three, Dave Norris. Second place to number seven, Kenny Blaine. Third place to number one, Frank Greisel. Fourth place, number 47, Dave Durham. Fifth place, number 11, John Wheatley. Sixth place, number 16, Helmut er Hartmut Ernst. And in seventh place, number five, Brian Bassett. Now are the finishers. The winner's time was 1 minute 27.11 seconds. 1 minute 27.11 seconds. From the top, three, seven, one, 47, 11, 16, five. 1 minute 27.11 seconds. Race one, the speed was 48.89 miles per hour. Race two was 46.95 miles per hour. Race three was 48.21 miles per hour. Race four was 44.84. And race five was 45.07. Here we go then, race 11. Another cracking start. The sounds of the 60s, those old bikes thumping away into the first corner. Who thought Hank Marvin could make a good noise with a guitar? These bikes make a much better noise than that. All bunching up on the midfield. One man seems to have got away and he's gone very, very wide. He's opened the door for the rest of them. 48, Dave Hammond. From number 10, Roy Gom holding on to second place at the moment. Roy Gom down that near Canterbury in 10. It's presented to be a leg trailer, but can't quite get it right in third. Big wide line then for Dave Hammond. Roy Gom in second. Number 15. Trying to get past uh, Roy Gom is John Shipley. Around the turn then, winding up the throttles. The last lap flag is out. Dave Hammond's got the best of it. John Shipley in second. Roy Gom trips down to fourth. Brad Davis moves up in a third place. Never seen Brad around for a while. Thought he'd given up for our straight. It makes it good stop over there. Look, they definitely misread the flag or something. There goes the checkered flag. The winner, number 15, John Shipley. And uh, I get that uh, second place into Frank Yates. Now they've all woken up and they're going to come round, look. A big round of applause there for uh, Dave Hammond. Long, long, long push. I think he's broke down and stopped, and the others thought that they misread the flag, so they all stopped with him and uh, give us quite a different result to that race. And the result reads, a win for number 15, John Shipley. Second place to number 17, Frank Yates. Third place to number 8, Brad Davis. Fourth place to number 6, Tom Blackwood. Fifth place to number 10, Roy Gom. And sixth place, number 48, Dave Hammond. No other finishers. The winner's time was 1 minute 31.82 seconds. 1 minute 31.82 seconds. Race 10. Race 10, the speed was 42.98 miles per hour. Race 10 was 42.98, and race 11 was a speed of 40.29, 40.29. This is race 13. We are going to hold race 12 after race 15. Race 12 will go after race 15. meant that Dave Hammond would have two rides on the trot otherwise. So this is race 13, we look for Paul Cooper on grid number one. He's just going in there now. 42, Glenn Phillips. So expect a little bit of a battle between those two here. They've both got to go around that very tight first turn. 
Look out for David Durham, Mark Taylor, Lewis Denham that becomes a man today, Marius Rockerberg, Tim Noves and Stephen van der Hel. Can't see Tim Noves, I think he's missing actually. For a bit of a tumble he took earlier. Away they go then, down that first straight. Paul Cooper looks like he's got it from the inside, but Lewis Denham comes across from the outside and uh, who's that? It's gone down that back straight. Now. Winding up that wall, a little bit of a whoopsie daisy there. He comes out wide, it's Marius Rockerberg that leads. From 81, Lewis Denham in second place. Glenn Phillips powering through to try and take that second, but Lewis Denham's not going to let him have it. Marius Rockerberg from Norway, the Viking, rules here in this one. But he's got two very fast Englishmen snapping at his heels. Lewis Denham and Glenn Phillips. I've lost Paul Cooper, or Paul Cooper down there in fourth place. Three is my first time out, but he's early to do something on his side. His side gate probably didn't help him. Here they come then, the last lap flag is out, and Marius Rockerberg leads from 81, Lewis Denham. Lewis Denham winds up that throttle, and Glenn Phillips trying to come through on the inside. Marius Rockerberg could find himself a very unpopular sandwich on this last turn. There's the two Brits battle with each other. They're holding each other back. And a problem there for Marius Rockerberg and the two go by and Lewis Denham takes it. Oh, that was very close. I think that uh, number one, Marius Rockerberg, just got the second and Glenn Phillips took third. What a cracking race that was. We're going to have a few more of them this afternoon, I can tell you. Race 12. Race 12, a win, a cracking win. He was a boy, he's now a man. It's 81, Lewis Denham. Second place, number one. Which was uh, Marius Rockerberg. <laughs> Fourth place was number 11, Paul Cooper. Fifth place was number 10. Stephen van der Helm. Sixth place was number 170, Mark Taylor. And seventh place, number 47, Ian Guthridge. The winner's time was 1 minute 16.20 seconds. Hands up, anybody who put that in the wrong place, the same as I have. From the inside grid will be 18, Reese Wilding. Martin Sturgeon gets a good start from the outside. He gets powering away through there and he's gone. Gareth Hickmore follows him through into second place. Reese Wilding is there in first. Tyler Hall goes up to third, goes up to second, goes back to third. It's tight stuff on that corner, I can tell you. It really is fast and furious. 15, Martin Sturgeon, Strider Horton, Gareth Hickmott, Mark Ferry, Reese Wilding, Tim Mount and Terry Massingham. Down now, but that was nicely equidistant from the first five places. Problems with Tim Mount at the back. Round they come then 15, Martin Sturgeon, 56, Strider Horton, and 7, Gareth Hickmock. Then it's Reese Wilding and Mark Ferry having their own private battle, and Terry Massingham at the back. Round they come then. The last lap flag is out. 15, Martin Sturgeon, Strider Horton. Reese Wilding made up a lot of ground there, come up alongside Gareth Hickmott. And behind Gareth is Mark Ferry and then Terry Massingham. We do just Round the last turn then, there's the chequered flag and here they come, it's Martin Sturgeon to take the win. Strider Horton second, Reese Wilding third, Gareth Hickmott fourth. Mark Ferry fifth. race 14. A win for number 15, Martin Sturgeon. Second place, 56, Strider Horton. Third place, number 18. Which is, of course, um, Reese Wilding, normally rides eight. 
Fourth place, number seven, Gareth Hickmott. Fifth place, 188, Mark Ferry. And sixth place, 213, Terry Massingham. The winner's time was 1 minute 20, 0.08 seconds. 1 minute 20, 0.08 seconds. Yeah. Look for Richard Smith. Look for Richard Knight. Danny Stanton. Bradley Kite. Jack Meredith. Rennie Van Veel. Yannick de Jong. And Martin Williams. Now expect better things this time of Yannick de Jong as he settles to this circuit. Rennie Van Veel never looks very happy on the start line. Perhaps that's nerves. Could be start line nerves that causes that, you know. Yeah, All even. And away we go. Down the first straight. Randy Van Veel gets a cracking start. Throws it sideways into that corner. And he pulls away from the rest of them. He goes out of that turn. Flat out down that straight. And he's down to the side. He's holding second place at the moment. Richard Smith coming good from fourth up to third and challenging for that second place. But it's Rennie Van Veel that leads. Danny Stanton in second, Richard Smith in third. Then Yannick de Jong in fourth, who I thought was actually going to get the uh, better of this track in this race. He's better in finals, he does in heats. All he's got to do is qualify. Round they come then, number eight, Rennie Van Veel. All very close together there as number nine, Yannick de Jong, comes through on the inside of Richard Smith. And Richard Smith fights back in that third place. But Yannick de Jong is coming to the city. Goes better as the day goes on. It's the uh, folders in first and second place at the moment. Rennie Van Veel, Yannick de Jong, then Richard Smith. Danny Stanton, Martin Williams, Bradley Kite. Somebody's thrown it on the floor on that bottom turn. Yeah, the flag's up here, haven't we? Uh, 461, Jack Meredith that's uh, picked his machine up. There goes the chequered flag. Rennie Van Veel takes the win. Yannick de Jong comes home good in second. Then it's Richard Smith, Martin Williams. Cool. Now we've got that out of them two. I'll let the lap scorers sort that one out. Race 15. Race 15 was a win for number eight, Rennie Van Veel. And in second place, it was number nine, Yannick de Jong. I think the Brits have got to start looking out now. They're getting the hang of this place. In third place was 33, Richard Smith. In fourth place was 25, Martin Williams. In fifth place was number 495, Bradley Kite. And in sixth place, 73, Danny Stanton. No other finishers. The winner's time was 1 minute 18.65 seconds. A speed of 47.04 miles per hour. From the top, 8, 9, 33. 25, 495, and 73. 1 minute 18.65 seconds, 47.04 miles per hour. Back to our upright machinery. It's the veteran long track. The veteran long track. Veteran long track Euro Series. Veteran long track Euro Series. Basically, the European Championship for these... Uh, Older riders and older bikes. Dave Hammond was going very well earlier on, but he ended up pushing home. I think he's got his spare machine out. Four riders only in this one. Looks like a speedway race, and away they go. Into the first turn. Well, Dave Hammond and uh, Ian Guthrie going to ride on that fourth place. The house has gone flying out in front. Round they come then. 54 it is that leads. Paul Levitz. Paul Levitz rides now. Oh, there he is. I'll see him in the programme now. Paul Levitz. Famous man from Speedway from a few years ago. Famous Evitz, Neil Evitz, Paul Evitz race team. Absolutely fine down there, back straight with this very, very, very quick machine. Val Jawa. And here they come. Number 54, Paul Evitz on the last lap. From 44, John Hartley, too tall, in second place. Ian Guttridge in third. They happened in fourth. Machine. The spare machine obviously the other one. Checkered flag goes and 54. Paul Levitz takes the win. 
from 44, John Hartley. 41, Ian Guttridge. 48, Dave Hammond. Race 12 in your programme. Race 12 in your programme. Win there for number 54, Paul Evans. Second place was number 44. Right, let's get stuck in. <laughs> Win for number 54, Paul Levitz. Second place to 44, John T Too Tall Hartley. Third place, number 47, Dave Durham. And fourth place, number 48, Dave Hammond. No other finishes. The winner's time was 1 minute 26.37 seconds, an average speed of 43.83 miles per hour. Gary said, call mum. So Doris, any chance of some water for the marshals? They're dehydrating fast. Race 16, the right-hand side cars are back with us. On the outside here, Peter Lloyd and Terry Madley. Oh, the revs are up and away they go. Lee Jones makes a cracking start from the middle of that gate. And down into the first turn they go. Steve Smith gets the best of it. Steve Smith, after running a last in his first race, is out to prove the bones are still in the meat this afternoon. As he goes down that back straight, well clear of all the rest of the field. Looks like the Palmer boys are up into second place. Paul Johnson is in third, but Steve Smith and Carl Squirrel back in their winning ways the way they were just a few years ago. Done a semi-retirement and done speedway only, but now he's back with a vengeance on the grass. And just look at him go. Down that back straight. Anybody say he shouldn't be in the Masters qualifier now then? Round they come. Number two, Steve Smith and Carl Squirrel. Paul Johnson. And Mark Brewster forced their way up into second place ahead of the Parmenter boys, Gary and Craig. Father and son team there in third place. Number two, Steve Smith and Carl Squirrel. Still well clear of Paul Johnson. Gary Parmenter, James Rogers, who had a win earlier on. Number four, Peter Lloyd. And number three, Lee Jones. The chequered flag is being made already in this one. Seem to be such a quick race. Number two, Steve Smith and Carl Squirrel take the win. Paul Johnson second, Parmenter's third. Second place to number seven, Paul Johnson and Mark Brewster. Third place is number 18, Gary and Craig Parmenter. Fourth place, number one, James Rogers and Kevin Colborne. Fifth place, number three, Lee Jones and Paddy Monk. And in sixth place, number four, Peter Lloyd and Terry Madley. The winner's time was 1 minute 22.81 seconds. The speed was 44.68 miles per hour. Gary Jackson, Carl Blythe, Roel Lindbergh and Eric Van Dyke. Duncan Tollhurst and Rob Patterson. Rob Wilson and Ian Whale. Paul Bickley, Paul Silvera and Rod and Tristan Winterburn. On the outside here, Rod and Tristan Winterburn. Very fast SGM Yamaha next to them. Paul Bickley and Paul Silvera, I think, broke down in the first leg, so they need every point they can lay their hands on. Next to them, Rob Wilson and Ian Whale, then Duncan Tollers, who had a win earlier on this afternoon, so it's all systems go here as they hammer down into that first turn. Rob Wilson seems to have got the better of it this time. The Winterburn boys are a very good second place there at the moment. Then it's Gary Jackson, then it's Paul Bickley. Then Duncan Tollhurst. And then Roel Lindbergh. 24. Rob Wilson. Ian Weil. Leading out of that turn. The Winterburn boys are very, very fast in second place and just waiting for a mistake from Rob Wilson. But uh, I think if they can keep holding seconds all day, they should make the final. That's the important thing at this stage. Paul Bickley and Paul Silvera need all the points they can lay their hands on. They're in third at the moment. Roel Lindbergh bringing up the rear. Rob Wilson, Rob 
Winterburn. Paul Bickley. Look at Duncan Tollos moving up in front of Gary Jackson. Gary Jackson holding a tight line there. Seem to be too busy bickering amongst themselves to make any ground on the front runners. Checkered flag goes then. Win for uh, Rob Wilson from Rob Winderburn. Paul Bickley, Duncan Tollers, Gary Jackson and Rollinberg bringing up the rear. 1,000cc right-hand side cars and a win there for number 24, Rob Wilson and Ian Whale. Second place, number 48, Rod Winterburn and Tristan Winterburn. Third place, number 8, Paul Bickley and Paul Silvera. Fourth place, number 74, Duncan Tollers and Rob Patterson. Fifth place, number 23, Gary Jackson and Carl Blythe. And in sixth place, number 52, Roald Inberg and Eric Van Dyke. The winner's time at 1 minute 22.65 seconds gives an average speed of 44.76 miles per hour. Right hand side cars then for race 18, race 18. makes a cracking start off the outside there, very fast down into the first turn, he's got a right right round the outside of everybody, yellow flags are up, we've got a problem there on the corner, Rob Bradley is in trouble, Rob Bradley and uh, passenger on the floor there on that first turn, I didn't see the dust, what was going on, but uh, there we go, Nobody, no doubt somebody will tell me, bikes and bodies everywhere, 